Get your hands together for my video with everybody dead. Die! that I started getting targeted ads for home brewing equipment. <laughs> Which is good. It proves the algorithm knows me because it's the only hobby for middle-aged men that doesn't involve either exercise or slaughtering wildlife. <laughs> they, they really got it. Uh, I think actually part of it might be that my brain never really recovered from being locked indoors for two years. Anybody else have that experience? Uh, yeah. It may have been that. It may have also been watching 2,137 hours of anime. <laughs> Which, I don't know if you guys know this, but that now officially I have spent enough time in Japanese high school to graduate. <laughs> Which was really exciting. They mailed me a diploma. <laughs> I think it's a diploma. <laughs> I can't read it. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, guys. Of course I can read it because I spent several years studying Japanese like every other fat nerd. <laughs> Actually planning a trip to Japan in April of 2020, so I didn't get to go, which was very disappointing. But it turned out that in pandemic Toronto, you could still like have authentic Japanese experiences if you knew where to look. Like uh, you could have gone to see people wear masks on the subway, <laughs> <laughs> or you could pay three thousand dollars a month for an apartment approximately the size of this stage area, <laughs> or you could spend uh, 18 months locked in that tiny apartment, surviving on instant noodles and jerking off to cartoons. <laughs> until, your, until your landlord finally discovers your mummified corpse during a routine alarm check. Uh, uh, another thing that happened during the pandemic is uh, I found out something about myself, which is that uh, I am apparently on the autism spectrum. Whoa. Literally everybody knew. Uh, <laughs> Anybody except my mother, you guys can ask any of the comics who have ever tried to have a normal human conversation with me. Um, I'm what they call high functioning because they've never seen the inside of my apartment. Um, but uh, no, it's good. I think it'll be good for my career actually because I don't know if you guys know this, but diversity is really big in Canadian entertainment. And now I am at the intersection of two underrepresented identities in Canadian comedy because I am both gay and funny. <laughs> I think it'll work out really well. I just need like one more identity so I'm like one car accident away from a CBC deal. <laughs> I'm just kidding guys, I'm not gonna get a CBC deal. My dad wasn't in American Pie. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, uh, it's actually it's actually funny because I don't end up doing a, a lot of queer shows for whatever reason queer producers don't like to book me. I was talking to a friend of mine about this who's significantly more fabulous than I am. Uh, like said, and he said to me, well, I think it's because you're too straight passing. Uh, and of course, the only thing I could say to that was, oh my god, thank you. <laughs> no, clearly he's never seen me try to throw a football. But I think... <laughs> I think what's actually going on here is that I actually am not diverse enough to be on queer shows anymore. I don't know if you guys know this, but like, gay men are the white people of queers. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody is interested in what we have to say anymore. We had a good run. Like, between the death of Matthew Shepard and legal marriage, uh, it was fine. It was like what I like to call the will and grace period. <laughs> We're not too threatening to put on TV. But we're still exotic enough and outside everybody's experience that it's, it's kind of entertaining. Because, you know, this was a time when everybody's lispy nephew was still, like, bringing his roommate to Thanksgiving dinner at Grandma's. And, uh, you know, they had to go through the whole spiel, like, uh, the aunts and the uncles all saying, Oh, Jeremy, why don't you have a girlfriend yet? You're such a good catch. You dress so neatly and you're such a good cook. And then they're 
significantly butcher room, I just like, yeah, that's almost like he's a girlfriend, huh? And then everybody <laughs> laughs. <laughs> Except for Jeremy, who's kind of shifting uncomfortably in his seat because of what they did in the car before they went into ground. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, I, uh, I have some sad news to, uh, to relate, actually, which is that uh, my long-term partner, common-law partner of several years, uh, recently left me to move to BC. It's his mental illness, not mine, so <laughs> small blessings. No, but it's hard when you break up with somebody that you've been with for a long time, you've been living together with, because, you know, everything around you reminds you of them. It's like, it, it leaves this gaping hole in the middle of your life. Well, two, really, but... <laughs> <laughs> One of them you can't fill with stranger yet. <laughs> Not one at a time. <laughs> no, it was bad. I was really upset. I was so upset, guys, that I wrote a poem. In case the entire setup to now did not make it clear that I'm a homosexual. Uh, uh, no, it was it was really bad. I was really upset. But uh, honestly, I have to say, I was a little surprised that it took him that long to leave me because I was not an ideal partner by any means. Just to give you guys an idea, the first time. We had sex. I gave him syphilis. <laughs> to put it another way, the first time he had sex. <laughs> look, guys, don't do this. <laughs> it's a bad look. Wear a condom if you're having sex with me, apparently. Uh, and I, seriously, though, I'm so careful. I don't know how it happened. I had just been tested. I swear it must have been a toilet seat. <laughs> That's what he asked me to call him. <laughs> uh, but it's tough. Syphilis can be very serious, especially if they don't catch it right away, which they didn't because I went to a walk-in clinic. Um, <laughs> uh, you feel like shit, you're tired all the time, you can't do anything. You know they actually used to call it the French disease because you can do nothing but lie down and surrender. <laughs> As opposed to the French Canadian disease where the bacteria keep threatening to leave your body. <laughs> <laughs> or the British disease, where they colonize every system, but somehow still can't manage to tell their sons they love them. <laughs> you guys uh, know how they cure syphilis? You look like you might be a syphy crowd. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, just in case, it, I, I don't know, with this many people in a room, statistically speaking, at least one of you got it from me in November 2019. <laughs> I will tell you how they cure it, just in case you need to know. You go to the uh, to the sexual health clinic, Crossways Clinic, Dundas West Station, in case anybody needs to make an appointment after this. Uh, you go and you sign your name on the ledger. I see you scrambling to write something down. Uh, <laughs> you sign your name on the ledger. You wait in the waiting room for a while. After a while, a very imposing male nurse comes and opens that like intermediary door, right? Gives you one of these. <laughs> So you go up to him, he takes you by the arm a little too firmly, leads you down the hallway into the exam room, closes the door behind you, locks it for some reason, leads you over to the bench, bends you down, takes down your pants, whips out these two huge eight-inch needles the size of this microphone, and one after the other, thrusts them into your ass, pumps them like a liter of thick white fluid, which is exactly how I got syphilis. <laughs> I think it was the same nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Toilet seat, I don't know if you remember. Um, <laughs> no, it, uh, it's, it, it's not great. So I am back on the market, which is easier now that I'm older. Um, when I was a young person in my teens and early 20s, I could not get laid to save my life. I know you would never know it now. But <laughs> it turns out it wasn't about me as a person so much as it was about the kind of guys I was interested in. Because let's just say that pretty 20-year-old gay boys aren't really looking for a boyfriend their own age, so much as they're looking for a dad. Who <laughs> wasn't just a little disappointed their high school sport was drama club. <laughs> so it turned out all I had to do was age badly and grow a beard, and then all of a sudden I was having the most sex of my life. It's crazy. This daddy thing really works. I highly recommend it. Ladies, if you're into younger men, grow the beard, it'll change your life. <laughs> No joke, I have three boys waiting for me right now to pick them up from hockey practice. 
No, it's gonna be good. We're gonna practice some slap shots to the five hall, um, which is a bit of hockey terminology I obviously learned specifically for this show. In case you don't know, the five hole is the gap in between the goalie's legs, so it's nice to be able to put a name to a place where you spend so much time. <laughs> No, I, I actually committed the cardinal sin after my breakup, which is I got together with another ex. Born, I don't know if you guys know. <laughs> we spent 21 years together, <laughs> very happily. But I'm of an age where I started watching porn online before you could watch porn online, right? You had to look at porn online. You would log in with your 28.8k dial-up modem, and a single JPEG would take 20 minutes to download. And it would always start from the top, which is not the part you wanted to see. <laughs> so you like, had to come up with something else to do while it was downloaded. So you'd open up a different browser program because they didn't even have tabbed browsing back then. You'd like, read the latest chapter of the Harry Potter fan fiction you were following. And then by the time you were done with that, you'd already come. So what was the point? <laughs> Has anybody here ever had the experience of coming across a fetish online you weren't previously aware you had? <laughs> yeah, okay. No, it's very distressing, right? Because you're going along, watching whatever your normal thing is, and then all of a sudden you're a new kink, and I'm not going to kink shame you, but please do not come up to me after the show and tell me what it is. Uh, unless you're cute and you like to get slapped in the face, then we'll talk. <laughs> all of a sudden your new kink pops up, you're shocked, you're disgusted, you close the tab, you take a step back, you're breathing heavily, your heart is pounding. Was your dick. <laughs> so control shift T, you bring that tab back up. Miracle of the modern internet, and you watch the rest of that video. Maybe you watch it a couple more times, and you start seeking out other videos like it, and then slowly but surely you start working it into your real life sex life until all of a sudden, six months later, you can't come without beheading a journalist. <laughs> it's a very difficult situation to get in. All right, thanks guys. Let me take Yeah, no.